go pick up a chair? Yes, we are. Here's Tito. As you may have heard, or just overall were able to tell, I bought a chair. <laughs> a special chair. A barber chair, if you will. I looked far and wide for this bad boy searching on Marketplace because this kind of chair is not cheap to buy new, nor a style that they probably even make anymore. But I found one, cheap enough that it was worth it to me, and close enough that I was able to get some help picking it up. Now don't get me wrong, this chair is beautiful, but it's not what I needed, per se. Some modifications were necessary, as you can tell by the title, But before anything, I need to clean it thoroughly. I did a very vigorous wipe down with a scrubby cloth and pine saw. Then went back over with a dry cloth to remove the pine saw. Yeah. And then it was time to move on to the changing of the color, which was the trickiest part. I started by taping off every area that I didn't want paint on, as my original plan was to use a vinyl spray paint to this entire chair, and spray paint isn't exactly known for its ability to be contained. For bigger areas, I simply tape ripped pieces of paper over top of them. And for the arms, I used the same tape to secure down the job sheet I previously had on the ground. put on my respirator because it's better to be safe than sorry, and I opened my windows. I did a single spray as a test just to see how it would react, and I waited for it to dry. Now we wait. How fitting that it looks like a blood spatter. Doesn't crack? Honestly, impressed. This was supposed to be the only product that I need to color the entire chair, but I found out about halfway through the can that it would not be. One, because one can was just not enough to cover the entire chair. Two, buying another can would run me a second $75, which is absolutely insane for spray paint for a project like this. Maybe if you use it for its intended purpose, but for this, not worth it to me. And three, the spray paint, no matter how light I was with it, just kept dripping down, showing visible marks because, you know, gravity. <laughs> Then
Then I ended up doing some research and found out that Ew. Though it is an unconventional method, using a chalk paint over top of a leather or vinyl is a viable option. So, as long as you seal it with a furniture wax, you're good to go. So those coats of spray paint I guess made for a good opening primer coat? <laughs> But I continued on as this was a very bright red chalk paint, which honestly felt so wrong to do, just painting it on, but it turned out so right. I did two layers of it and they were thick and pigmented layers, as you can maybe tell. I did use about three quarters of the container for this entire project and then I went in with a sliver of furniture wax to coat it. I went in with actually two coats of that. The secret to making this actually work is to add a layer of wax, wait for it to quote unquote dry down, and then use a clean cloth to kind of buff it in and really work it into the fibers of the chair. This is going to soften the paint into the chair. I did do a second coat of this just to be sure, and then I removed the paper and tape to find out that there were, there were a couple spots where the spray paint actually got to. But with the use of more pencil and a scraper, I was able to clean up all those edges. I guess it was painted silver. That's weird. That's really weird. 
The second and last order of business for this was to get a couple of line heads. This was no easy task. I looked on Amazon, but I could only find really like expensive ones basically that would actually be handles to like drawers and whatnot, which I figured I could grind off. But then I found one thing that was a door knocker and it gave me the idea to maybe search out Etsy as Etsy sellers generally have more vintage pieces than I don't know, Amazon would. <laughs> but unfortunately they usually don't have more than one of a kind because it is a vintage piece, it's kind of hard to find more than one. I looked for weeks and weeks, and by some stroke of luck, I was actually able to find two lion head door knockers. Better just be the box. <laughs> I think it is. Okay. Approximately the same size from two different sellers, oddly enough, so I got both. Anyone want a nut? Honestly, all of these are super unnecessary. Not necessary. Get it. They may not seem exactly the same because one obviously went through an aging process, the other one didn't, and I may fix that later on in life, but for now, it fulfilled its purpose. Referencing my photo, I decided on the placement as this is not the exact arbiter they used in, obviously, Sweeney Todd. I needed to fix it onto this in the best place that I could while keeping to the original image. Let's do this and I secured them both on with an epoxy, one specific for securing metal to metal. This will go on it after if I want to keep any of it, but we'll see. See? And cut. Okay, there we go. One, seriously. I don't even know where that went. That does not look like equal parts. That looks like equal parts. I am opening this up and putting it on the inner portion. Just casually not getting any of this on film. Keeping as much out of this hole as possible. That sounds really weird. Once they were placed down, I used clamps to, to keep them steady as they cured. You know, all these clips are really doing the most right now. And I am able to move it if I need to. The chair still felt slightly off to me and I didn't know why, so I took one last look at the reference photo and realized that the arms were actually supposed to be red. And right now they were stark white. <laughs> Easy fix for painting though, which I used that same chalk paint, so it was a definite match. And once dry, I put resin epoxy on top of it, and that was, well, that was that. <laughs> Welcome to my Sweeney Todd replica chair in all of its glory. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.